Greetings, everyone. Um, I'm Randall. I'm one of the organizers with SLC DevOps Days and DevOps Days or DevOps Utah Meetup Group. Um, this month, we are proud to present Zach Brown with Atlassian, um, talking to be talking to us about a new um, Atlassian offering using um, AI um, in their technology stack. Um, he'll go into obviously significantly more details on that. Um, we're glad to have Zach Brown um, presenting with us this month. Quick note, um, obviously we're not having a conference today. The DevOps Days conference has been postponed until October 17 and 18. Uh, we will be opening up ticket sales sometime soonish. I'll go ahead and send that email when that, when that becomes available. Pay attention for um, discount codes as well. Uh, we're also always on the lookout for additional um, people that want to present in our meetup. We can support both in person and as evidenced by today's call over Zoom as well. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to bring up, Brett? No, I think that's it. That was great. Okay, cool. Um, then I'll go ahead and hand it over to you, Zach. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right, I'll go ahead and stop sharing and give it to you. Okay. I will share my screen here shortly. Um, but by way of intro, thank you all for inviting me to this. Hello from the East Coast of the U.S. Uh, and I, uh, I work at Atlassian, as you probably saw from the invite. I am a partner solution strategist, which means that I uh, work between our product teams uh, and our um various teams within Atlassian alongside our partners who implement our services. Uh, I do a lot of work on the East Coast uh, in Europe and the financial services industry. Um, and uh, one of the people I work with connected me to your group and uh, you know invited me to talk a little bit about AI. So um, this is definitely an Atlassian uh, branded type of presentation I'm going to do, but, it's uh, I'll try to contextualize it in the broader AI market. I'll try to make it more relevant for your DevOps folks, um, but invite any questions on this um, at any point. I'm not going to focus too much on on the product and and selling it to you, but hopefully it'll be emblematic of some of the other things that are going on. Uh, and I'm going to bounce back and forth from uh, presentations a couple of times here, um, so apologies for that. But go ahead and get started. Okay, so. Um, Atlassian, I think uh, I've been with the company for a little over uh, close to a year and a half now. And for me, as someone who used Jira since 2014, um, pretty intensely, I honestly didn't know all of the different tools that we had, all of the different products we had. Um, some people think Atlassian is just Jira or Confluence. Um, people know individual tools separately, Trello, Bitbucket, things like that. But they don't often view it as a platform. And that's one of the transformational models we're um, undergoing right now is to try to build something that connects uh, data uh, across these platforms and gives people more consistent experiences. So the way we view intelligence and Atlassian intelligence as our offering is a capability that's an experience across our platform. So it is pretty cool from a development standpoint. We we started this uh, a little over a year ago now, in uh, actually under a year now, in starting to build this capability and um, started with a very small team. Even in a big company, Atlassian is about 10,000 people. We, we started with a team of six who started building this capability. And it, sp it spun up very quickly as we sort of got the core concepts of what we're going to do down and expanded from there. So you'll see some of these things that are available in some products now that'll be available in other products later. So we really do have sort of a, a pull system of capability coming from uh, intelligence across the across the group. Um, so I'm going to talk like philosophically what Atlassian is doing, and you can probably compare that to your own experience of what other companies might be doing. We really have a set of three beliefs that are driving uh, what we're building. The first being that um, AI is going to accelerate individual productivity and overall will make teams more uh, proactive and adaptive. Uh, secondly, if I can get my animations correct here, um, teams are going to use AI to actually get the value of big data. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in more in depth. And then the last is that um, 
AI is positioned as a as a teammate. It's not something that's going to replace your job. It's something that uh, does have specific um, things it can do, specific capabilities that it's good at, um, and it's going to work alongside you. All right. So this first one, um, proactive and adaptive, right? Like the, when we talk from an agility standpoint, uh, organizations rely on retrospectives on these, you know, backwards looking views of what's happened and they use that to become learning organizations to adapt all the things you've heard for years and years, right? But the problem is that creates reactive strategies where multiple teams are left playing catch up. They're not as new teams reteaming, you know, marketplace of skills type type situations. It's it's difficult to anticipate these changes and challenges. So what we're trying to do is to look and use the data underneath um, all of the work that's happening in these systems and create general uh, predictive analytics uh, using AI in that way to help teams be proactive and change and reduce the sort of uh, forming, norming, storming, performing cycle uh, down and get real data on that. So here's an example uh, of how we're trying to do this. Uh, some of the people who are have, have used Jira, like myself, know that figuring out how to write a, a JQL query, um, getting it right takes either a lot of time to figure it out and existing knowledge of SQL or um, looking through our community articles to figure out which tag you need to use, right? Instead of that, um, you can, with, with the AI features that we've built into this, and this is this natural language is existent in other uh, tools too now, we can ask it simple questions and say, what, what are these top blogs? And it converts it to JQL here. And then that helps people get up to speed more quickly on what are the right ways to ask the tool, um, how they can find the information they want. And it also gives access to more people who want to do ad hoc reporting, who want to understand what's going on, saving time from trying to figure out uh, how the tool works. Another capability that we've built, this is a, our tool called Jira Service Management. Um, it's a IT service management tool. This is uh, an agent uh, who is you know, tracking a service request. And uh, you can see there's 15 comments on this. So in the sort of idea where you've got an operations team who might be distributed offshore, you've got a lot of comments that happened overnight. You've got your SLAs on the right here um, to see how much, how quickly you need to respond, how you're doing. And you want to figure out what your next action is. So they summarize the comments here quickly. This is the manager of this team who comes in and says, okay, now I know, you know, what I might need to do. Here's some recommendations. It's not exactly right, but it gives you a summary so you can take action on it. And that's kind of that teammate paradigm. All right. And then summaries. So again, like leveraging that data, the idea is that we're taking things beyond just like chat GPT and an external system. We're trying to take the data that's existent in our customers' databases and say, look, what is the relevant information on this specifically? So, you know, in this case, uh, you can ask it to summarize the document and it can tell you what is project ABC. It can start to give you more information quickly. You don't have to read through the whole page. You don't have to read through multiple pages that are linked across it. We're trying to shorten that time to get up to speed. All right. And then on the big uh, the big data side of things, right? Um, AI like is not the tool that we're using here. AI is the clay that is used to build these tools, and the data is the important part. So, like you can have a great AI tool regardless of where it is, and especially with our tool, we need good data in the systems to actually make it of value. So, from a philosophical standpoint, um, you know, compare compare what Atlassian does to Microsoft tools or Google tools, like they're great, but they're not open by default. Uh, and so what happens in the Atlassian stack and the reason that we're trying to sort of push this is that our work is open by default. We're trying to figure out, you know, something that does, we can, we can understand the permissions that exist. We can carry those permissions through. And then we can say, look, uh, if you have the information to access this by default, let's generate the right information for you there. And the important, like, I'm not saying this to uh, hype up our tools. I think this is this is the expectation of of users in this day and age, right? There are there are a lot of complexities to understanding what the data is and how to get that data surfaced the right way. Um, but uh, really, the expectation is that that's solved when I go to use it. You don't want to have to explain to a user that you know uh, the AI result wasn't the correct result. You want to trust that it it's the right information and that you can verify that. So 
those types of things are really important as we start to see more of these tools permeate the marketplace. Um, and then, you know, again, like taking that concept into the page itself that we showed before, rather than summarize it, take definitions, make that simpler, right? So this is a, uh, a reference that talks about the project itself. I can hover over that item and then it'll give me sources if, if they're available to where that information is actually from. So this is an important part in saying, okay, like the more you use this tool, the more effective it's going to be. It fits with this data uh, model that you have and you can start to find ways to deprecate old assets, old things that are not relevant and focus on the things that are as you try to you know, enhance the health of this, this data. So these aren't, these are cool features, I think, but they're not um, things you wouldn't expect. Like the, 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 the group that are using these start to expect these features very quickly. Um, and then there are lots of questions that we have about this, right? Like if you wanna use this, sounds cool. Everybody wants to take advantage of generative AI. Um, or assistive or predictive even once we can get to that point uh, across all these items. But it's really important on, and on customers' minds, like, are you going to get those permissions right? We're not using data to train this on other models. I think most of the, most of the um, companies who are building AI things, they need to make sure that they're respecting responsible AI principles. So for us, it's really critical to um, work through our partnership with OpenAI and figure out how we can manage the pipeline of data in a way where they don't get to train uh, on their on our customer data and we don't get to train on individual customer data. So that's a question we get asked all the time. I suspect if you all work in that, you will too. Okay, so the last thing um, on the virtual teammates, uh, I'll show you an example of a specialized agent here who would be a virtual teammate. We use this internally as well. This is in fact, an example from something that we we use. Um, so integrate with Slack, you know, it lasts and integrates with lots of different products. So you're thinking across like, what is our platform? How does it extend to other tools that the teams are using? So you can create a consistent experience. The idea here is that we're trying to make it more simple on those support requests to say, let's answer those frequently asked questions in a way that makes sense. It's taking the concept of a chat bot, which is absolutely not new, um, but it's linking it to our systems to track that work. And at a certain point, you know, a customer is going to want to say, or an individual who's, who you're working with is going to want to say, I need help, right? So like find a way to go through this system, let the, um, let the chat bot, let the virtual agent here answer those most commonly questions and save time as best as you can until you really need to support that, that individual. So that's really what we're seeing is that this type of agent and other specialized agents, um, here's a few examples that I can show you that we're seeing that are being built across the software development life cycle, right? There are agents that can be built and specialized to either uh, a knowledge base that can be uh, specialized to a certain set of actions like deploying. Uh, they could uh, give you information on um, you know, what's gone into production and the quality of that data, uh, of that code. Um, other things like that, people are trying to specialize against the specific uh, needed action. Okay, so um, for us, the important things that we have got so far are that look, data and privacy is really important to customers. Like we're getting asked about that every time when we get past, oh, that's cool features. The second is, um, are we are we creating things that support team members and don't take their jobs? Yes, that's the intent. I think that's the broader intent in the marketplace too, that people are seeing, you know, with the quality of information that's out there right now, it's not, you can't just, you can't just give AI tools um, the reign of, of taking over a, an entire complex task and expect it to do that effectively. In fact, you've probably seen a lot of situations where people are getting into lawsuits because they have broken copyright, they have, uh, you know, libeled other people on accident, lots of things that, you know, you really need to pay attention to before you get into this. Um, so like, what have we built? I'll just show you a little bit of where we're at and where we're um, building to. And then I'm going to switch over to another presentation to show you some other cool things real quick. April 23, like I said, is when we announced this team 23 as our team as our, our annual conference. Um, we went into closed beta with some of that feature, those subset of features pretty quickly. 
Um, we went to open beta with thousands of customers um, uh, in September, and we uh, announced general availability uh, in December. So we're still moving pretty quickly. We've got a lot of another uh, announcements coming up, and you know, the broader marketplace is that like we we're, we're building this into a platform, and we think that's uh, what a lot of the big companies are going to do. We've seen Microsoft investing heavily into this. You've seen all of the big companies really trying to build this into their platform. But um, there are a lot of niche players who do a super good job on specific tasks. Like I use Otter AI, for example, all the time to track uh, meeting notes. And that's super helpful to me. So there are specialized tools that are better at this point. And I think they're, um, what customers expect is one AI platform. If they're like, I want to invest in Gen AI, I want to buy one thing. But frankly, that doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, and so each of these things, each of our tools are um, working in their own uh, databases and trying to start to extend and play nice with each other. Um, and yes, I realize I'm not sharing my screen because I'm switching over to another presentation here. Okay. So um, with that, like we have a few predictions I want to share with you of like where we think these are going and I can show you what, what we're building after that. Maybe this is a good time. I don't see any questions in the chat, but maybe it's a good time to pause before I switch over to this. Okay. Cool. Um, so following up on this, right, the, the, the idea of big data uh, for insights, specifically insights. Um, I think there's a couple of things here that are uh, interesting about what has happened with big data and what people are talking about, what buzzwords people are using to describe the work that's happening. Um, the big data pipelines that people were creating had a couple of challenges with them. One, they are very unwieldy. It's a lot of data. Uh, and the quality of that data was such a key input that really only the biggest enterprises could realize real return on investment on those investments. So Either you spend a bunch of money at the top uh, of, of creating those efforts to wrangle the data, or you spend a bunch of money on the other end of the pipeline using data scientists, engineers to translate what is basically imperfect data into meaningful business queries that would hopefully trickle into insights down the line. Um, it's not a super scalable model. So um, as data, you know, as people try to turn this into enterprise ready um, processes, uh, it, it's a cost uh, problem that really um, isn't solved by the current way of working. And AI, we think if we can get the, the data right, if everybody can use these tools in a more, um, as, they, as they grow more mature, I think that AI will help people promise, realize the promise of what big data was trying to do. So on the generative AI side, like on both sides of that pipeline problem, um, AI is helping to realize the the promise of big data that that it couldn't really um, solve. AI works with um, unlabeled data, and because of that, the bar for data input has gone down dramatically. So through large language models, the access to that data, as I talked to, talked about earlier, is democratized, and it's not just data specialists who can or should be the ones who are looking at it. Um, what that means is that the learning loops are scaled tremendously. You can get better insights quickly, like I showed you with the natural language processing. Um, for us, there's a huge amount of data in JIRA. There's a huge amount of data in Confluence. It's hard to manage sometimes. So when we're talking to customers, they ask about how to manage the data that our tools generate. And that there are they know there's insights in there that they could generate and that we want to do a better job of providing through um, through our tools, not just through people. So, you know, we had, we announced last intelligence. We have been using machine learning for a long time uh, to enhance core experiences in our products, but um, through starting at Lasting Intelligence and building that as a capability into the platform, um, it creates this common technology foundation for all of our cloud tools. Um, this teammate idea is sort of the beginning for us of driving improved productivity and as like developer experience, developer productivity is on basically every company's mind that we talk to. Um, we're trying to hit those first use cases that I showed you that are day-to-day -day sort of patterns. Um, and then we're building upon that for other things that I'm going to show you a little bit. Um, 
this is the second prediction here. Um, as we're rolling these out, as companies are rolling these out, we're starting to get real data on the impact of AI. There's not been a lot of like really proven scientific studies yet. Uh, I would encourage you all to check out the um, ANZ Bank report that came out uh, about a month ago now about um, developer productivity using uh, Copilot. And it has some interesting findings, but the findings from these different um, reports have been sort of counter to each other, right? So we don't know yet how this is going to play out. Some of their findings were around types and complexity of uh, components that were being built by the developers and how helpful it was at different levels of complexity. Um, but there is conflicting data on that. But regardless, the Centaur model is coming from the idea of uh, uh, AI chess. So uh, the idea being that um, what when when Gary Kasparov lost to um, Deep Blue, right? Like that was a, a model of shifting to the IBM Watson, the computers are taking over all this stuff, right? But what actually has happened since then, if you haven't been following it, is that uh, humans plus computers working together against the computer opponent wins most of the time. And so that's the idea is that this combination of um, humans working alongside AI models is going to be more effective uh, more consistently than an AI working together or working on their own. Um, and, you know, there are limitations in computer thinking, right? Like a lot of the challenges that we're working on, that our customers are working on uh, are complex problems with open world situations where there are unexpected things that these computers haven't uh, faced yet. Um, so that might not be true um, when we figure out uh, you know, it compare that to the, uh, the chess world where there are sort of a set defined parameters. But we do think that the Centaur model is consistent with how we're trying to build things out, what we're seeing from some of our competitors to do. So here is an example of something that uh, fits into that model. Uh, when I showed you search earlier, um, I showed you how it would highlight and say, here is, you know, a, an acronym that uh, you can look up. Here's the knowledge base that it has. But what we're doing is trying to extend this across our different platform to say, OK, here is a name of a project. Um, and it is related to not only a knowledge base article, but also we've got a development uh, component here. We've got a GitHub repository where you can find the information. You can see the work happening across these other things. You can also start to see who's responsible for it and who um, who you can contact to get more information. Uh, and you can see there at the bottom that we're starting to ask people to verify this. Now, um, this one's interesting and relevant to your group, right? So this is in JIRA. This uh, feature does not exist yet. This is something we're working on building. But this is an idea about next best action. So the virtual teammate here is helping you figure out what work to prioritize, even when your work is spread across many tools. So we've got Elastic Intelligence acting as a DevOps engineer's assistant, pointing out several failed deployments and builds to investigate, prompting this person to do a pull request, uh, uh, to review a pull request, sorry. It minimizes distractions, and then it optimizes the flow of work based on available time, urgency to tasks, and dependencies between parts of the pipeline, which suggests the most effective actions to take in order to eliminate bottlenecks to accelerate the pace of the entire team's delivery. So. You can take this idea and pair it with automation rules, other things that have existed for a long time, and you can really start to see how um, the specificity of what AI is doing matches with existing tools and 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 ways of working that aren't um, aren't really just fluff, aren't really just marketing, right? There's definite value here um, to build into what already exists. Um, so. What we're doing, and I think what a lot of companies are trying to figure out, is um, building this understanding between concepts in our different tools to create this platform. And our intent is to extend this to external tools in our, you know, we have this philosophy of open tool chain, and that's why we integrate with so many different uh, tools really well. So the idea being that we take, you know, concepts from each each um, each product, and we build those capabilities like search like find find the next best action and we surface it no matter where you are um because again that's what it, like that's what customers expect they expect to be able to ask a question to a tool and get an answer 
uh, regardless of where that answer is. And so you can see like the idea here is that we take the large language model that we've got um, uh, and we plug it into this teamwork graph, giving people across the organization the power to interact with a bigger picture of how work flows through the organization. Um, and that's really what people, when we talk to customers are hungering for, they wanna see the entire system of work. They wanna see the end to end of how work flows. That's what we've been trying to figure out with value stream management and value stream mapping, like getting all this stuff visible uh, it's it's really just an extension of that. And then for Atlassian, uh, internally, like we have a ton of tools. Like I said, I, we have like 15 uh, products that we we have in our portfolio. Uh, we're building tools for ourselves that then uh, become, uh, you know, collaborative uh, options for our teams that we then eventually roll out to um, to customers too. So, you know, for us over the last couple of decades, the number of capabilities has grown. Um, we have built new tools to enable ideation. That's become Jira product discovery, cross-functional collaboration across business and technical teams. That's Jira work management um, and DevOps delivery models, which are Compass and Bitbucket and a number of other tools that we've integrated. So um, with this Elastic Intelligence, like I said, that's a capability that we are building that others are similarly thinking about that is going to um, connect the platform across your data. All right, I'm gonna go back to the other presentation real quick and then I will probably wrap up in just a few here. Um, all right, so um, just to put that together and specifically what it means, you can see like how we're rolling this out, how we're building it um, and what we released in December. For us, we've got you know summaries as a capability across Confluence to your service management. And as we build these out, we're going to add more capabilities to um, each of these products. So it's a consistent experience. Um, a few other things that we're, we're planning to build. Issue summaries, again, rolling that capability from JSM into Jira. Uh, definitions in Jira itself. So you, you know, don't have to go to Confluence to look for that information. You can see in the description of an item or in the acceptance criteria, just cross-linking, making that uh, more simple. Um, making a more advanced search kind of similar to when you have Google key results uh, showing, okay, cool, here's some more information I need to see, clicking on it and saying, okay, here's a more visual view uh, because that's a, that's a design paradigm people are coming to expect, like I said. And then um, this is Compass. So this is our sort of component library backstage type uh, uh, product, uh, making things more simple there to see what's going on. Um, you can speak in natural language to this, um, get answers about your tech stack, specific answers about components, deployments. And we're really just trying to reduce time um, to uh, find the information you need. And then, you know, some other tools have capabilities like this, and uh, we're trying to catch up on just code review and other tools we might use uh, in Bitbucket that developers are using every day. So um, I think that's it. I talked about a little bit of this earlier. Um, you know, we're building in admin tools to manage this. And I think, as I said, the responsible rollout of this is complex. The integration of these, these, these features um, and who needs to see what um, certainly is something that needs to be thought about. But, you know, for us, and I think for other companies, uh, those are kind of table stakes for being able to um, actually roll them out in big companies. So that's something where uh, we've already got done pretty well because we have those paradigms and big big companies do. But is, there's new challenges to address and security new challenges to address in um, uh, in the DevOps space. Uh, and uh, you know, there's lots more details that I'm not going to go into today about that. But you can read on our site if you're interested. So that's um, that's it. I think like for me, hopefully, I tried to relate what we're doing to the broader. Um, landscape of what's happening in, in generative AI and assistive and predictive AI. Um, I realize again, like I said, this is very Atlassian intelligence focused, um, but happy to answer any questions you have about um, what we're doing or anything more broadly. Thanks for the presentation, Zach. Yeah, let's go and open it up for uh, Q&A. Uh, feel free and come off mute and ask questions away. Zach, I appreciate your uh, presentation. I, that look, we're, a lot of us that come here are interested in tools, and many of us use Atlassian tools. So I appreciated you kind of demoing 
um, how Atlassian was going to try to tie in AI. And you answered a lot of those questions. So it sounded like, like with Jira, some automation, um, would you have automation around like creating user stories and things like that, which sometimes can be a bit of a bottleneck for, I know they are for me trying to create, I know kind of what it should be, but I've appreciated AI and helping me get over the kind of that, uh, it's stump in writing. Does yeah, it we do a lot of that kind of stuff. It does. It does. So like you can, you can do that. I think that's sort of like, that's also another thing that's becoming table stakes, right? Like you can just get into chat GPT any, any time and create those things. And they, it comes up with pretty good information. So like, we're building that into uh, Confluence and Jira to where you can just say, hey, like write me some user stories with this information or reference this page and, and get those in there. So like we're trying to take a view of it that's one relevant to different personas. So like if I'm a product manager, what do I want to do with this, right? If I'm a development lead, like what do I want to do with this? How do I take those common tasks and and make them more simple? But But we also want to differentiate between like what you could just go and do with chat GPT and say, rather than just create parity between those features, start to do stuff like generate it, but then come up with a list of um, different types of tasks that should be associated with it. So like break down this feature, show me the, you know, like take this list of non-functional requirements, put it into the acceptance criteria from our, you know, enterprise architecture page, and then say like, okay, give me 10 stories and, three potential, you know, bugs or spikes that I need to look out for as part of this. And I can review every one and edit it uh, when I put it in. So like make it kind of like we're talking about, save the time switching between applications and do it more in context. That's how we're trying to build it. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, do you see, you mentioned Confluence uh, and this kind of follow-up question of, uh, like I use Confluence a lot, but sometimes it's it's, it's difficult to take from my my uh, you know sprints and stuff that are pretty much in Jira and pretty well documented. It would be nice if if it could automatically take some of that information, put it in Confluence for those that maybe aren't on your team who want to see like release notes or product right. information. Is it, is that something that Lasting would be doing or? Yeah, in fact, you could you could do that even before AI. So like you can you can create some rules in Bitbucket with automation that generate release notes into Confluence from uh, when you when you run it through Jenkins, for example. Like you can set up like check checkpoints like that. So um, that's that's one of the cool things, is right? Like figuring out like getting getting customers and leaders who are interested in AI like opens up the possibility to do things with work uh, workflow automation that for security reasons in the past, people weren't willing to do. Like if that was something that they thought needed, you know, a, a, a review board to go ahead and do that, like through those processes, like now people are more willing to open up the the, the path to that. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're certainly trying to think about how to, there's a, there's a few concepts. So like one thing is our concept of smart links. So if you have a page um, in Confluence, right? Uh, you can mouse over it uh, in in Jira and see the details without going into the application. Similarly, like taking widgets from Jira and embedding them into Confluence pages so you can see the right information and make it more like graphically available because um, Jira has not traditionally been a good like data visualization tool, right? People pull the data out and use it in other ways. So uh, that's a bit of a rambling answer, but short answer, yes. <laughs> cool. Is is the plan? I can't tell us all the the schedule, but would at last you be rolling these features out? If you're an existing subscriber to, like Jira or Confluence, would that just be part of the offering and just come out as they're available? Yeah, it's, it's available now. So you have to have uh, cloud uh, enterprise or premium. So they're only yeah. available on our cloud, and that's a you know, a philosophical thing that we've, a stance that we've taken and that a lot of other companies are taking that we're only building these things into our cloud products, which is tough for governmental clients, tough for, you know, highly regulated industries sometimes. But um, so, but if you meet those, if you meet those prereqs, then yeah, they're available for admins to toggle on and off by, by um, product and feature. So you can go and play with this right now if you want, like it's available. Great. I won't 
take up any more time. Others, if you've got questions, please answer, ask. No, and I, you know, for those that are viewing the recording later, happy to answer questions um, if you have them. Um, doesn't seem like there's a lot of questions, unfortunately. I, it does look like really cool technology. I really wish I worked at a Jira shop. Like, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> ADO kills me. Yeah. Well, you know, we play we play nice with them too, and uh, you know, I'm sure they're they're working to build uh, new features in, right? Um, that's the yeah. challenge. You don't always get to pick the tools, do you? So, uh, just one more question I had, I guess. I know Copilot is a, is really popular for developers, and I've been a big Bitbucket fan for a while, but now I use Bitbucket and GitHub both. Is is Bitbucket? And maybe you already have that. Are you rolling out something like Copilot for Bitbucket, or it's yeah? I mean, some of the stuff I showed you there at the end, like the 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 code review for uh, for Bitbucket, like that's a feature that's coming soon on our roadmap. Uh, I think we'll be behind them for a bit, probably, um, in terms of what people are using it for. But um, yeah, the intention is to bring like developer tools. Uh, more into the into the existence and frankly like we're working with customers to prioritize those things that's that's one of the coolest things about Elastian is like we are working with customers day in and day out so like what they need what we're seeing in the market is like what we start to build so we've got a really good uh, feedback loop in that great Ooh. I was curious um how far you think the sort of virtual coworker I think is what you called it how far do you think that will go? Like, you know, like one, one issue we see in more on the engineering management side is like when you're running a sub one or something, yeah. you know, there's a lot of stuff going by in Slack. There's all these updates and things mm -hmm. happening. And then afterwards, you've got to have like an RCA or something and you got to mm -hmm. have an internal one, an external one. Um, just pondering, like, it seems like AI could do a much better job of like, noticing when certain things happen and writing the timeline and is that something that's sort of pondered in the feature set for that yeah i think so i mean i think like what we see a lot of people do is create these agents like i was talking about for that so you know if you have the capability to analyze lots of rcas right and say here are the like a, or you've got like a drop down list of what the root causes could be right like you can get, you can train the tool on that agent to say it's likely this one or it's likely this one. Here's the evidence for that. So, um, you know, and I think like you're probably going to, from an enterprise standpoint, pair that with, you know, analytics tools uh, and monitoring alerting tools that, you know, give you a broad picture of it. So I think like the, the idea of virtual teammate, right? Like is, is take the, take the time consuming, simple, discrete tasks, um, and let the teams focus on that or present information about what a, an RCA could be um, and then check it with your team, right? Spend less time on doing that, more time on sort of solving the broader root causes themselves. Like that would be, I think, what what our vision for a team would do. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really I, good question. For sure. I know that um, in that same vein of sort of engineering management, um, like developer productivity is a hot topic. Mm -hmm. You know, is I, AI anticipated to help shed light or transparency on how so some metrics that we could use to manage develop, developer productivity or? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm I'm entering the realm of conjecture here, okay? So I know this is gonna be on YouTube and uh, this is all my opinions on this one. So I would say uh, probably my, my feeling would be that there's um, you're going to have to define some of those metrics and then get the tools to help you measure them and get predictive on how they're how they're doing. Right. Like get get monitoring in place to help those things. Can they define it like in the same way that you could go to chat GPT right now and say, like, what are the most common uh, developed productivity metrics or give me some examples of you know, 
real life um, success stories about improving developer productivity along these lines. Like you can do that right now and get some ideas. Um, and you can do that within our AI tool too. Uh, but that's not going to say, okay, cool. Like set, set these up for me, set up the dashboard. So you're going to need to do some work on, on doing that. And then the tool will monitor it. But I think like working with, with, with teams and, and, uh, companies, as we build this out, like, you know, we might start to standardize some templates for things like this, that AI supports, I would look at it that way. Right. So like, you know, working with all the customers that we work with, I think the idea might be that, um, people want to know from us aggregating data across these companies, which is not something we actively do, but we could talk and bring people together to talk about this. Uh, in a way that could create um, some more, you know, out of the box, like, here's what a good practice is, as opposed to you having to find that out on your own. Nice. And I'm thinking about like, all the data you have at your fingertips, if you're using the entire ecosystem, like, you know, this person created this uh, wiki page in Confluence, it's, it's this popular, it got this many views, and they created this many bugs or they had to resolve this many bugs or this many bugs escaped into production because of this person or this person, you know, I, it just seems like really powerful stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I think so, right? Like, the, I mean, the, like I said, the idea for us is creating that like connected data foundation and the data lake that, you know, makes that data accessible to, to people, whether they want to use it through our products or take it out and use it in other things. Like, that's what we're trying to do. Nice. Any other questions? Well, cool. Um, again, thanks for thanks for letting me come and talk to you. Uh, I'm sure I would have a lot to learn too around developer productivity when y'all are talking about it. Um, I have lots of thoughts and interests, so uh, I will um, keep an eye on this. Thank you. And again, like if anybody has questions, happy to connect on LinkedIn or you know you can email me after the fact. Um, zbrown at Atlassian.com. Cool. Thanks, Zach. Um, we will go ahead and distribute this out to, or, or we'll put it on our YouTube channel and then we'll also email all of our, um, members that this is available for them. Um, I'll give you a link and if you want to post your, you know, LinkedIn information off of that, you're welcome to. Sure. We'll do. Cool. Thank Thanks, you Zach. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.